Amen and amen. amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. It is such a blessing, you guys, to even be in the house of the Lord. And it's definitely a blessing to be back here with you all once again. It's been a while, you know. Uh, and it is definitely an honor for me to stand and introduce to you all this morning our speaker. I was introduced to her 25 years ago. And I met her in church, just like many of you met her in church. But let me tell you, I connected to her through the word of God. Because that is just what she is. Uh, but just a little bit about her personally. She is the mother of two. She's the grandmother of two. She got this two thing going on. <laughs> she is an aunt. She is a co-worker, and she is a friend to many. Once you meet her, you become her friend. Can't go anywhere with her without her knowing somebody. We can be out of state, and she will know somebody. She has a very large uh, spiritual family, and she is a mighty prayer warrior. She loves to study the Word of God, but more important, she loves God himself. She desires to obey. She not only study it, teach it, preach it, but brothers and sisters, she lives it. She is one that the scripture says that the spirit of the Lord has anointed her to proclaim the good news of the gospel. I introduce to you a redeemed woman of God, Minister Dorothy Jones. just don't know. Mm. Ha. Okay. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him most to the utmost because he is worthy. He is so worthy of all our praise. Uh, I can't imagine. You all may be seated. <laughs> when Pastor Ross called me and I told him, I said, oh, wow, I'll think about it, and I'll call you back. And I was sitting there, Pastor, in so much pain when you called me. I said, nope, I'm not going. There's no way. But the Holy Ghost said, oh, Holy Ghost said, you got to go. And I said, well, why I got to go? And he said, because I'm sending you there. Make no mistake about it. You are on assignment. And I said, well, Lord, if you send me, I know you will equip me. But you got to touch my body. <laughs> you know, we sing the song, Yes, God is Real. He's real in my soul. And I began to pray, and after a while, I was on a line to get some ejections and stuff, and I'm not going to keep you long. It's a short story. And the Lord, the, not, my doctor called me, and she said, I want you to come, and we're going to have a conversation, and we're going to do it with the, the other couple of the doctors and stuff, and we'll see what we can do for your pain. I said, dang, God. Waymaker, setting me up. So I, I don't know, I called Pastor Ross and told him I'm coming. But you know God puts things in order. All he wants you to do is obey. Obey. If you're going through anything and you don't see the way out, fall on your face. 
ask God, what's, what's happening here? Am I out of line with you, with someone else? And watch him fix it for you. So he began to put things in order for me that I had to get injections. And they had said I couldn't get an injection, but God said she will get an injection. And then pride set in, I, I'm, I'm honest. Pride said, you don't wanna go down there, you don't feel good, you can't hardly walk in this and that. But the Holy Ghost said, you going, you going, <laughs> you going. And I said, well, Lord, what do you want me to do when I get there? He said, I'm going to give you a word for them on this assignment. He said, because I want you to tell them I'm about to bust them loose. I want them to know they've been parked too long. I'm on office here today as an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm sent to tell you it's time to launch out. God said, you've been sitting here too long. You've been going through the, the round and round, round and round. But as of this day, and from this day forward, vision is coming into this house, and it's coming from God to the head. Hear me. I said, to the head. Not the little tails, but to the head. Because God has an assignment for this ministry. I was sitting there and I was looking at the, the where you was playing the past memories and stuff. And I know when this started. I know. I was a part of it. I watched Pastor Johnson, who I love dearly. And I watched him make that transition from religion And moved over where God called him to do. There was another pastor here that was supposed to move over. Lathan Esther, who was like a brother to me. Family adopted me. These two men was to take this city. I didn't say Little Rock. I said this city to a new level. But God had a ram in the bush. It is up to you now, Pastor Ross. That mantle is falling on you. There is a need in this city to go to the next level. And God said, it's time for you to take these people to a new level. When you do, I saw where you got building and you added and it's beautiful and you've increased. And I don't do this because I, I'm not just a, I'm not a prophet. I just speak what God tell me. I was in a church several years ago in, in North Little Rock. And I gave the pastor a word. I said, this church next door to you is going to be yours. They're going to come up out of this church. And you are going to have this church. And it's been some maybe five or six years. And they sent for me to come back. And at the time, I couldn't go back to them. And they said, the pastor wants you to come back, Sister Dorothy, because he wants you to see our new church. I don't come down here and tell you something that I heard. There's a shifting. In the spirit right now. Right now, it's happening right now. And it's shifting you to another level, to a new place in Christ. You've long, you sat here long enough, and I'm not saying that you're going to just physically move out of this building. You're going to take these people to another level. Because the city is dying. The city is dying. And God has a plan for Mariana, Arkansas. His plan has not died with Pastor Johnson or Pastor Esther. He's always going to have a ram in the bush. So your, your assignment is to launch out, launch out into the deep. 
go with me. And I do honor Pastor Ross and Lady Ross. I'm glad to see that, that they are still together. And I say that, I mean that, because there's a lot of priests and pastors and people, they gone, they done divorced, split, done all kinds of crazy stuff in Little Rock <laughs> and across the nation. <laughs> but you're still yet holding on. Nothing, 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 nothing should separate you. And you should love and respect one another. The anointings that she carry will help propel you to this new level. So get ready, because when I come again, <laughs> I expect, because God is not a God that will lie. He can't lie. I expect to see these pews full. I expect to see you maybe taking that little Methodist church that's been over there for 100 years or more. I don't know. But anyway, I expect that to be occupied. See, if you're moving and you're moving with the Holy Spirit, you bust the loose. You can't stay contained. My uh, ex-pastor, Pastor Caldwell, did a series on trying to put God in a box. And we do that. We try to limit to him to what we want him to do. And he is not moved by what you want him to do. He's going to move by what he wants to do. And so we have to take God out of the box. And we have to let go and let God handle it. And all those that y'all are going to fight him, you better watch out. Because this is truly a move of God. So don't, don't draw your weapon because it might just backfire. So we're going to look at uh, uh, the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse. I got a bunch of papers up here, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm a teacher. We're going to look at Luke, the fifth chapter, and we're going to do some verses there, and then we're going to go to John, the 21st chapter. A very familiar story. We know it. And, and I, I you honor you for standing for the word, but I'm going to skip around, so you might want to be up and down, so you might not sit down. I give you permission. The word I'm giving you is called launch. Launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep. In response to Jesus' call to discipleship, people may leave one kind of work for another one. They might leave their families and friends, and they have to go somewhere else. There is a revelation that Jesus called people, and he called people to follow him and to become useful em employees in the task of bringing others to Christ. That's your purpose, is to bring others to Christ. Revelation call is a call to action. We don't just stay parked on the same bench forever and ever until we die. Anything that's not moving is dead. So God has a move going on right now in America. I'm tired of hearing about COVID and not enough about Jesus. Jesus didn't stop when COVID came along. It didn't take him by surprise. He came and some of us got came through COVID without any ashes on us. Some lost loved ones and family members, but God is still the same. God is still the same. And if you had to be locked in, tightened up, whatever, you should have come out better. Your time should have been spent with the master and not on the phone or in the TV. Some of my greatest days in COVID was in ministry on, on what do we call it? No, we were tweeting one another, whatever. 
We had prayers. We had prayers for people that were sick. They was healed. See, these instruments that God has given us, this media, we need to use it right. God gives us technology. And how many of you know what a blessing it was to have technology done COVID? Some folks couldn't get out to church. I think we stayed closed for maybe two weeks, but our pastor says we are better than COVID. Put your mask on. I got a mask service down at the Family Life Center. I got one for the 65 and old, older. And then I got a regular service. So we had three services. We never stopped. We have never stopped. We had parking lot services, and we've never stopped. God is good, and COVID is nothing to God. That's a straight from the pits of hell, and we sent it back. But God has kept us. So when he kept you, he didn't keep you just to come in here and sit on a pew and look good. There's an assignment for everybody in this church to do, to bring others to Christ. It's not just on the leaders, the pastors, the deacons. Anybody in this church is a disciple. You are to find somebody to disciple and bring them to Jesus. My, my greatest thought was during COVID, how many people passed away and nobody offered them Jesus? How many people left here and didn't know Jesus? And then the church locked up, locked down. Christians were scared to even touch other Christians. <laughs> we, we do follow protocol. I'm not a rebel sometimes. But we do follow protocol. <laughs> but I serve a good, good God. I, I'm, I serve a good God. And, and I've had polio, shots. I've had all kinds of shots because I've been in and out of the country. And I know that if God is my keeper, get your shot. Get your shot because you don't want to spread something that you don't know that you got. Get your shot. I'm not anti-shot. But get your shot praying. Believing that God is going to keep you even in the midst of COVID. And anything else that the enemy try to send the pathway. See, it's time, church, to rise. It's time for the body of Christ to stand up and be who God called us to be, the light. And we've been sitting too long. And we got complacent. We don't even try the discipleship anymore. We see people on the streets going to hell. And we don't even want to stop by and offer them a word from the Lord. Because number one, we're afraid. We're afraid. But God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of love and power. And that power enables you to speak to the stranger, to tell them somebody about Jesus. We are in the days of our last days. I'm a believer in that. And I believe God is calling us to rise up and take our places and get out here and bring people into this house. No, everybody won't do it and can't do it. But some of you know, as Corey said, God's been good to him. Corey know he owe God. And some of you owe him too. And so I came to tell you the word that God said was it's time to launch out into the deep. In the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, we see Jesus standing by the lake of the Sea of Galilee. And the Bible said there was two boats standing by the lake. Now, it's, this is a normal situation for fishermen to pair up and go out together. Now, I had to read that because I don't know nothing about fishing. I just like to eat fish. Jesus could have chosen either of these boats, mind you, but Jesus went to Peter's boat. Some could say that it was by a chance, but I said there was a 50-50 odds because there were two boats. And I believe B Peter's boat was chose by Jesus on purpose. Jesus saw the potential in Peter. 
And he knew that someday the great apostle Peter would one day stand and literally preach and preach a word of God and thousands would be saved. But however, in order for him to become apostle Peter, he first had to become a disciple. And to do this, he, Jesus said, I need your attention, Peter, because what I'm getting ready to do, you need to sit down a minute and listen to me. COVID was that time for us that God gave us to sit down. Get in your word. Let your word get in him. Get in you. Stop sitting by and watching TV all day and sleeping and eating Cheerios. Get up. Get in the word when you get up. Before you go to bed, get in the word. You think COVID, it was bad. Satan is not pleased that we're trying to fight COVID. He is something else out there that he wants to see in. But we are ready. Because those of us that went to God and stuck with God, we, we build up. So we're ready. So Jesus was teaching Peter. And why Peter, Jesus was teaching, but why Jesus was teaching, Peter was washing his nets. Peter was working. Just like some of us today, when the word comes, we leave church. We, you know, do that little thing. We sing, we'll stay to sing into midnight. But let the preacher come up, and then we find all excuses. The bladder gate can't hold the water. Children get the agni food, and we got to get up and leave. This was Peter. I imagine Peter really supposed to have been listening and he was trying to, but Peter said, I got work to do. I got to get this done. I got to get these nets clean. So he was only partially listening and his attention was divided. Now, how many of us can relate to that? How many of us know darn well we come to church, we have here what the preacher's saying. But I bet you know every song was sung. You know what Sister Rosie wore to church that Sunday? You know what that deacon had on, that cologne? Y'all invited me back. <laughs> so Jesus get into one of the boats that belonged to Simon and asked him, to put out a little bit from the shore. And then he got down and he began to teach. Jesus was doing his job. And he expect us to do ours. How many times have the cares of this world distracted us from listening? The pressures of life can be overwhelming sometimes. And it's easy to give God a back seat while we take care of things. We got to make a deal with God. God, if you just let me go home and bury my father, I'll, I'll come back. Lord, if you just let me do this, I'll come back. How many know that your time is in God's hand? Not your time, your hand. Peter had good intentions, but Jesus wanted more from Peter. It was more that was required of Peter because of Peter's anointing and what he was going to do. The anointing that's on this house is great for this city. I don't care if you got 10 members, Pastor. You make disciples out of there. Run with it. And them stubborn mules, turn them over to God. Turn them over to God. Just turn them over. That's all I say, turn them over. God will deal with it. Don't you try to fix it. God said, let me handle those. So while on the boat, Peter, God was able to get Peter's full attention. That's what COVID did for us. It set us down. <laughs> and we had to do one or the other. Either you ran to God or you ran away from me. 
I had the best time of my life in 20, what was it, 2020? And I'm still having it. I got a little stronger, a little wiser. God has been good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. At 69 years old, I started building a house. Hallelujah. Didn't have a dime, but had a prayer. I had a word from the Lord. And the Lord said, pursue. Pursue. At 70, I'm in the house. God's been good to me. God's been, he kept me. He's kept me. So the enemy said, I'll come through the body. But God said, not so. She's mine. This is temporary. Today was a test for me. Because even yesterday, I started to pick up the phone and call Pastor Ross. Say, get somebody else. But the Holy Ghost in me would have beat me down if I had not fulfilled this assignment because it was an assignment. It's by no chance that he called me. The hub, up, yes, Lord. Because God had already gave me the message. He said, go tell him. It's time to launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. The doors of the church, the Lord told me to tell three pastors during the pandemic, open your church. You causing people to backslide. Locked up church. It's, Satan got y'all so locked up and in fear your people won't even come out. But they're in the house doing some stuff. And cause we can't see them no more. We think everything is well, but God said they were backsliding. And I called them, and I went to one, and I said, God said, open the doors. Open the doors of your church. You either open the doors of this church or you will not see another season. God is sincere about the church. What did he tell this same Peter upon this rock? I'm going to build the church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. COVID can't prevail against the church. And who is the church? You. I am the church. You the church. These buildings can collapse, but not so. You are the church. And God said, get out. Launch out. Get, your, get out. Let me show you what try, when you try to think, do things your way, Pastor Ross. This for you. <laughs> I know you would. Let's go to John, the 21st chapter. 20th chapter. 21st chapter. You know, there's times God tells you to do things, and you make excuses. God said, go down to that lady's house and clean it up for her. Lord, I ain't cleaning her house. I got to clean my own. He didn't tell you not to clean your own. He said, so go clean hers. You got all week to clean yours. <laughs> Let's see how Peter gets orders from Jesus. Launch out to the deep and let your nets down. 21st chapter said, Afterward, Jesus again appeared to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And they go on and say, and it happened this way. And John gives the names of the disciples that was there. And two others were together. Sometimes you're going to have some with your pastor and some won't. And here they, Peter says, I'm going to fish. I'm going to fish. Master, we have caught, taught nothing all night long. I'm a fisherman. I know what it is to fish. You're a carpenter. You don't know nothing about fishing. We've been out here, we've been fishing, and ain't nothing happening. But now, Jesus, you don't know about fishing, because you're a carpenter. Now, you might can build the church, but you can't feed the church. I 
know my trade, and my trade is to catch fish. Your trade is to build buildings. How many know God is so grateful to us that he don't strike us down in our ignorance? Peter tried, and he didn't mean to be disrespectful. He's just saying that, you know, you're just a carpenter, and I'm a fisherman. He didn't mean it. He didn't know no better. Bless his heart. Bless his little heart. He didn't know no better. Because, see, Peter didn't really have a relationship with Jesus at this time. He knew of him, but he didn't know him. So when you get a revelation of who Jesus really is, you don't be trying to play games with him. Don't be trying to play the games that you played in the streets with Jesus. Don't be trying to run a gang on Jesus. God told me one time at the end of the election, he said, it didn't go such and such a way because people tried to manipulate me. They tried to say what I didn't say. They said he was going to do this and he was going to be elected. I didn't say that. So they tried to manipulate it. And God said, not so. You, I'm not a God to be manipulated. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I change it not. And I'm not going to change for you just because you are you. You're going to change for me. So Peter got the other boys. And they went out. And the Bible says they immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. <laughs> John 1, 1 through 3 tells us, be careful of leadership we follow. Can you imagine how discouraged and depressed the disciples was after the death of Jesus? And even though he had appeared to them several times after the resurrection, he was coming and going. So here's these group of men listening to this stranger telling them to launch out into the deep. Cast your net out. Cast your net out. Jesus began to talk. I love it because it was only really two, two people in this whole, in these texts, Jesus and Peter. Hear me. Hear me. I'm speaking to the leader. Because if where the head goes, so does the body. If the head ain't going nowhere, the body ain't going to go nowhere. If the head's sitting around on his tough, 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 tough love, then the body ain't going nowhere. Because you follow the leader. You know when we was in school, we played that little game, follow the leader? And if you try to get ahead of the leader, then you out of order. And God has to deal with you. So you follow him as he follow and if he's not following, when you get on out of here and find you somebody that's following Jesus. Because I sure know that you don't want to go to hell following the wrong person. And don't be trying to make you a pastor. That was free. Whew. Trying to make us a church. I'm going down the street. I don't like what he's doing. I don't like them people. So I'm going to go down here in this little room, and I'm going to make me a church. And do you know folks will follow foolishness? Because they don't want to endure sound doctrine. They don't want to hear teachings. They don't want to be told what the words say. Not what I say, what the words say. So they'll run from one church to another, and they just run their around in circles like a fool. The Bible did call them foolish. Follow the leader. That's what they told Peter. We're going to follow you, Peter. Peter didn't have an idea of what he was talking about, where he was going himself. He just knew he went back to doing what he used to do, and that was fishing. He knew how to fish. When you leave church, and I don't know where this is coming from, but it's somebody up in here. If you even decide to leave church, don't go back whoring. Don't go back doing what you used to do. If you was a pimp, a gambler, whatever, don't go back doing that stuff. 
It's hard for you to turn your hand back to the plow. It's hard for you to do that. And if you're still doing it, stop as of today. I told you I came on assignment. I didn't come to have you shouting and jumping and bucking. I came to impart to you for this next season that you're in and that you're going to draw fish. But you got to have a solid foundation in here. Because what's going to come in here? The drug addicts, the drunks. They're going to come. And you're going to have to know how to deal with these people. For six years, I taught in a shelter in Little Rock, in the women's shelter. Second or third time I was there, I was getting ready to leave. And one of the ladies came and said, teacher, I saw Jesus in you. And I looked at her and I'm thinking, the whole while I was teaching, her head was to the wall. And she was in several different worlds. But Jesus sent her to tell me that she saw him in me. You don't know who's watching you. You better be what you are in here when you go out of that door. You can't be three people. One at midnight, one at day in the morning. You can't be that. God said no. Somebody in here got to stop what you're doing today. Today. He said, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at the pastor. I'm on assignment. I'm going back home. But I'm going to tell you what the Lord said before I go. Because you in here are a part of the discipleships. You in here are going to help build the new church next door. You in here is going to take this gospel out that you're being taught. And you're going to catch some fish. And you're going to bring them in here. And you're going to disciple them. And don't be just happy with your foe and no more. Right. People are going to hell because people, Christians, I'm talking about the body of Christ. We're scared to talk. We still, we, let me tell you something. And this is free too. Every time people have a funeral, everybody going to heaven. Do y'all know that? They don't live like demons with ten tails. And folks know these people ain't going to hell. But everybody down here, oh, they're going to heaven. We'll see them again. No, you won't. Stop trying to put people in heaven that you know ain't going to heaven. Just try to make it yourself. Clean up your house. Your own salvation. And stop doing that. I told somebody the other day, I said, I'm sick of folks telling people they're going, oh, honey, you'll see him again. No, you won't. I'm the first to tell. I have a brother. And he's not living for Christ. And I told him, he told me, my sister come home and bury me. I say, the devil's a lie. I'm not spending a dime of my retirement on you. I ain't burying you. I'm not going to drag you in nobody's church because you got two healthy legs. You're better than me at 76 years old. You get around better than me, and you think I'm going to drag you somewhere where you can't go to a church now? I ain't doing it. I, I, I'm telling y'all, I, I came to impart to you all. Stop lying, telling these people they go, you'll see them in heaven. You ain't going to see them unless you're not... Okay, let's go on. I don't, let me get back. Jesus said here, launch out. So after he, his focus mainly was on Peter. And that crowd that followed Jesus was full of lost people. Why do you think Jesus would just take his time, his busy schedule, to stop on the sea and preach? And we got people who won't even come up in the house and preach. We got people that won't come in the house and teach. We got people that see people everywhere, in the marketplace, wherever you are. And you ought to be telling somebody about Jesus. 
He said, if you're ashamed to disown me, I'll be ashamed of you. I will not tell my daddy that's one of yours. I'm just a real person with y'all now because I want to see y'all in heaven because I'm going. You may not be on my street. My block may not be your block, but we will be at the supper. We'll be at the table. And I want to see you there. So God told me to come and tell you it's time to get things right and start discipling. Make disciples. Get some of these cousins and kin folks and bring them to the church and make disciples out of them. Young men standing on street corners, bridges hanging down, no self-esteem, don't even know who they are. Somebody need to go to them and tell them about Jesus. You, well, now, sister, thought that they might shoot you. Well, if you shoot you, you're going to heaven, ain't you? Okay. Okay. So let's look at the obedience. At your word. You hear what I'm saying? At your word, I will let down the net. That was Peter's great statement of faith and trust in God's word. God's people throughout all ages have lived and gone forth with confidence in the word of God. That's all we have. He left us 66 books. And if you try to live 66 books, that's, that'll take you all of your lifetime. It's trying to live in the word of God. Just do what he say do. Follow the leader as he follow Christ. Serve. Serve him. Serve God first and foremost. I never just been a pastor person. No offense, pastor. But I'm an intercessor for him. I don't have to be in the pastor's face. I've sent a lot of them home. Go home to your wife, to your family. Leave these people alone. They'll kill you. And you would gone, and they'll get somebody else quickly. We kill pastors. We're killing them. Pastors ain't got blood pressure, diabetes, sick, all kinds of sickness in their bodies because of stress. Stress coming from the people that they are pastoring because you haven't grown up. You don't know yet that when the storm comes, first I'm going to the man that spoke to the storm and told it to be still. And then I might call pastor. But the first thing I got to do is get on my knees. And I got to call on the name of Jesus. And then, then, and only then maybe I talk to pastor. Quit running him down, telling him all kind of foolishness and gossip. He ain't got time for that. He's supposed to be in the word. Getting ready to prepare y'all for this next move. So there's a shifting going on. Y'all gonna say he acting foolish, but he ain't acting foolish because I'm imparting something into him right now. He gonna go home. He gonna get more and more in that word. He gonna have time for y'all. <laughs> Don't call his wife either. You know how we do. We try to get to the wife so she can tell him. <laughs> Don't do that. Grow up. You know how we have babies. How many ever seen a baby wear a diaper 20 years old unless he was sick or flick? God says it's time for you to get off the milk. Chew you some steak, some meat. Get off the milk. Get something in you so when the storm comes, because they're coming, you're going to have some substance. And on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. You better know for him for yourself. And that you don't, if you can't get to the pastor, you can get to Jesus. But we say the line is never busy. Call him up. Call him up. You can get to him when you can't get to pastor. Because you know he, he can block the calls. Y'all might not know that. But he really can block your call. 
there's some numbers he probably don't want to talk to. So he can block them. Just like I tell the secretary, send that t take a message. I don't want to talk to them today. Send them the voicemail. So, but if I'm rooted and grounded, I don't have to worry about it. I won't get upset with it. Pastor, I called you six times and you didn't even answer your phone. Have you ever thought about he was praying? Or maybe he was ministering to his family? All y'all quiet. The catch of the fish, verses six through seven. Throw your net out. Throw your net out. That's what the Lord is saying. Throw your nets out. And the Bible said they caught a great number of fish. 153 fish. Peter didn't make no such excuses. And his faith in Jesus now was rewarded by catching fish. The only reason Peter, why Peter did what Jesus asked him to do because he believed in Jesus. Not because of the circumstances seemed right, because it wasn't right, because they had been fishing all night. And they hadn't caught anything till Jesus came by. Yeah. You've been struggling and toiling and turning? Call on Jesus. He's a midnight rider. Yeah. Call him up whenever you can. Call him in the morning, in the noon. I work. I'm still working a couple of days. COVID did bless me, though. Because I was going ready to downsize my workload. And uh, I was going to tell the boss, look, I'm getting ready to retire, but I'm going to downsize. I'll help you for a couple of days till you get somebody else. But then came along COVID. And we had to close for a few days. And I said, look at Jesus. I can stay home. <laughs> See, COVID did me some good in a way. And I'm still, I go in, and I come out, maybe two or three days. So it was good to me, but it was the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous. God knows, you know, I'm telling you, if you get connected to the right vine, just get connected. That's what I'm trying to tell you all today. Get connected to the right person, and that's Jesus Christ. And watch him work in this ministry. This city is such a depression on it. Oppression. Why? Where's the light? Where's the light? We had good times down here, didn't we, Corey? Over these years. Didn't we, Steph? This city gave me, well, Rondo gave me my first teaching ministry with the Esther family and Pastor Vassas. His wife and him had come up to the church and I was teaching and she said, asked her daughter to ask me would I come down here? And I did. And I started in that church. And now I'm full circle. I'm back. God had to separate us because he told me I had finished my course. He said, you finished there now. You've taught, you did all you can do. Now it's up to them. It's up to them. I don't know how long it'll be before I see you again, but if I don't see you on this side, I will see you on the other side. <laughs> they caught fish. They caught fish. When Jesus orchestrates our work, it makes all the difference. Don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to make up a ministry. Let Jesus call you. We can work for a long time with no results, but when he re comes in and directs our path, we have results. We always miss something great when we make excuses instead of allowing God to direct our path. They had so much, Pastor, the nets was breaking. They could hardly 
pulled the fish in. I want you to see this through the spirit. And they had so much, they signaled to the other partners. Hear me. And the other boat, come and help us. There's unity. There's unity. You can't come down to my church because you don't dress like we do. You ain't this and that. I've been in white, black, blue, green churches. I've been in all kinds of churches. I see no color. I serve Jesus. He didn't tell me to go to just black folk. I asked him one day why. He said, because these folks need the word too. And then he backed it up with his word when he took me to Peter. And Peter didn't want to deal with them Gentiles, but God showed him that seed, all them kind of animals coming up and down. God said, that's you. I send you out there to them. They need the word just like other folks do. So when other folks start coming in this church, don't get offended by the color of their skin. They people, they humans. He got to change it up. You got to let the Holy Spirit work on these hearts. I tell people all the time when I go around, there's only one heaven and one hell. Now, I don't know what you think that you don't love me down here on earth and you think you're going to see me in heaven. The devil's a lie. You're deceiving yourself. There's only one. And if we can't get along down here, you're showing going to meet me in heaven. And I tell them that quite often because people get confused with the color of their skin. And they think there's a private heaven. And like they got their private churches. But that's not true. There's only one. And if we can't get along down here, we will not see Jesus. So some of us going to have to change the way we think and feel about people. Because God told us to do what? Love one another love one another you may not eat like i eat but you gotta love me and i find out when you get to know people and you associate with them they just like you they got issues that you have i tell a girl you put on your clothes just like i put on my clothes we females you go through the same thing i go through your daddy was a drinker, mine was too. We're the same. So what make you think you're any better than me? We got to love people. Some of us been wounded. God said, I healed the brokenhearted. Take that mess to Jesus and let him heal you. If they did you wrong, forgive them. Clean your slate. When you forgive them, let God work on their heart. People not speaking. Families not speaking because of foolishness. Mama loved her better than she did me. And there are men she might have. But what you going to make stop speaking to me for? That wasn't me. That was mama. Why are we going to be fools? Because, see, mama got to give an account for her. So love one another, children. Gird one another. Come up under one another. Help one another. If you see your brother and sister and they need, help them. Help them. Don't talk about them. Help them. Because tomorrow might be at your door. He signaled the other partners, and they came, and they filled their boats so that they began to sink, overflow. That's what the word the Lord said, overflow. Overflow, abundance, more than you can imagine, overflow. You think you're getting something now, watch it. Overflow, overflow. Oh, Lord, overflow. Hallelujah. It's more room than you can handle. Overflow, overflow. overflow. Mm. <laughs> Overflow. You think the purse is about empty now? You watch and wait on God. 
Peter had to work with others to get the job done. Verses 8 through 11, and I'm about finished. Peter's reaction and the call of the four disciples. The Bible says that Peter fell to his feet because he said he thought he was not worthy. But Jesus called you, and when Jesus called you, he equips you. You don't worry about what other people say. You know that you know that you know for yourself, I'm doing a work for the kingdom. And I'm working on behalf of Jesus. I'm not out here working for you. Jesus is my master. Peter referred to him as master. Hallelujah. Jesus is our master. Jesus followed the commands of his father. He said, I do nothing Nothing unless my father tell me. And you should be the same way. You should have an ear always tuned to heaven. And you should say, Lord, send the angels. Tell me what I need to do. Yes. Psalms 103, the last verse said, oh, angels hearken at the voice of God. Yes. And God tells us, he said, my sheep know my voice. Yes. And they won't listen to another. So there's no reason for you to be around here crazy and act the fool as a child of God, go to God. Listen for his voice. Whatever you stand in the need of, he's got it. Overflow. Overflow. When my house came into fruition, I, I'm telling you, I didn't know nothing about this. I rode around with my realtor all through the city, Bryant Benton, and I looked and I picked out these houses online Folks can mess up some houses and have the nerve to put them out there on land for two and three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, regular houses. Anyway, I wrote, <laughs> I looked at these houses and I, we pull up and some, I said, no, we ain't even going in there. And she took me to this subdivision that had built out in uh, Sardis area. And she said, wanna go look here? I said, you know what I want. We done connected now spiritually. You know what I want. And she said, well, they're going to build this new area in this side of town, but you're going to have to wait. I said, they didn't wait on the Lord. Ah. He shall renew. In the meantime, as they say back at the ranch, I love Westerns. The Lord had put a couple, I, had, I was living in an apartment, been living there for years, and I think he put Satan up above me <laughs> to make me get out. You know, sometimes he had to boot us out. And I prayed, and I prayed against them. Now, I'm, to, I'm real. I said, just take them out of here, Lord. Just, just get them out here. Just move them, strike them. I'm like David. Take the years off. <laughs> Holy Ghost said, if you put them out and they get out, where are they going to go? And now I'm going to hold it on your account. I said, well, God, they just don't. He said, I didn't say that. He said, change your prayer. I started praying for them. They had a purity little baby. I prayed for the, the stuff that they was involved with wouldn't, wouldn't come near that baby. I said, protect that baby, God. Keep that baby safe. I sit up nights praying for them. And every time I would pray, it'd get quieter and quieter and quieter. God said, you resist the devil and he will flee. Not you. I said, God, I got to stay here. He said, I know it, but I got you covered. When you leave out of here, you're going to leave in pride. You're not leaving. You're not running out of here. And you will not have it on your, on your account that you prayed somebody and they was put out. Because the lady said, I, now, Miss Dorothy, if you say so, we'll have them put out. I couldn't do that. I have a child. 
I have a son, a daughter. They're adults, but I wouldn't want nobody to put them out in the street. And how many know you reap what you sow? So I said, now, I, now, Lord, I might have some stuff up there that, you know, me and you working on, but I sure don't want that to be one of them. <laughs> I don't want I ain't finished with me yet. He's still working on me. He said, you pray for them. You pray for them. And I began to pray. And peace. Fred came to me. So much and so, when I got ready to leave, I talked to the young man. And I told him, I said, I'm leaving now. And if you want, you could probably, probably get this floor because y'all need to be on the first floor because the way y'all act the fool. <laughs> Anybody else ain't saved like me. And they might have you put out. So I'm, yeah. I said, so now you might apply for this apartment or you better change your ways. And he, well, where you, I said, the Lord has given unto me that I build me a house. I said, and you can too if you get your job. That's another sermon, Pastor. But you women, quit taking care of these ladies behind men. Shoot. Don't even bring a pecan home. And you spending all your little check, your children's check. I'm real. I told y'all I was on assignment. I'm setting order. That's what apostles do. If you got to take care of him, you don't need him. Jesus is your provider, your maker. Jesus is your husband, man. Don't go drag Mutt home to try to make him a husband. Mutt is not going to be your husband. He was out there with Jeff. <laughs> and that didn't work. And now you got him drug home. You're going to try to make him be, this is my husband, and I'm going to put him in a suit, and I'm going to drag him to church. Jesus, help us. Well, that's good. Maybe he will change. But let me tell you what the Lord told me several years ago. You can't change another person. He said, Dorothy, you didn't even change yourself. I changed you. So all of y'all trying to fix up somebody, this, I'm telling you, this is free. Stop trying to fix them up and let God do it. Let God do it. Anyway, Peter fell down at Jesus' knees, and Jesus, he knew that I had already healed Peter's mom-in-law. There was, there was something about this miracle of catching fish was different. Peter began to speak, said, depart from me, because I'm a shameful man. Oh, Lord, we know when we act up wrong, and we try to cover it up, but you know, this is a word for you. I'm a sinful person, because everybody in this room sins. You have the opportunity every day to sin. And every day you should repent. You should repent. And do it quickly. Once you do it, repent right then. Peter saw the great power of Jesus displayed in Jesus' knowledge in an area where he knew Jesus wasn't even qualified for, and that was fishing. It made Peter realize his own spiritual bankruptcy. He was bankrupt. He didn't have Jesus. He didn't know. Yet he already knew enough about him that it made him understand some things about himself. The word of God starts with you, in your heart. It's in your heart. Don't try to use this word to beat up on nobody else. Before I got here, Pastor, it, did, it was for me. The Lord said, you sitting down talking about in pain, but I called you to preach the gospel. So this is my coming out, too. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Yes, 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 Lord. Peter knew that Jesus was Lord. Peter knew he was a man. Peter knew that he was a sinful man. And Peter let this make him a humble man. Peter's prayer was good. But it's even better to pray, come near to me, for I am a sinful man, Lord. Peter didn't change, but Peter knew he had to change because Peter had an assignment. The Lord told him, said, don't fear. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, Peter. Don't be afraid of me because I'm getting ready to bust the move in your life that's going to make a whole lot of difference for you from this day forward. Peter was not so much a fear of Jesus, but he was in awe of what had happened. That's what's going to happen, Kingdom Connection. People are going to be in awe of you. They're going to say, what are they doing down there on this street? What's this street? Poplar. Poplar. Woo. Glory to God. Poplar. Huh. Ah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Peter's fear was in awe when Jesus told him to put away the fear because from now on, you're going to catch men. No more fishing for fish. When Jesus told Simon Peter that he would catch men, he told Simon that you're going to do what Jesus himself did. There was no greater fisherman that we know of than Jesus Christ himself. And he wants others to do the same work that he did. He even told us in scripture, you will do these works and you do greater works. Jesus started with three, then 12, then hundreds, and then thousands. And he's still adding. All the apostles were unlike a bunch of men. They were fishermen. They was tax collectors. And they was hot-headed like Peter was. In the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated, common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Everybody ought to know when you've been with Jesus. You don't have to have a cross down to your knees or the biggest Bible. The Bible says we are the light. When you come out, people ought to see the light in you. There's something different about God's children. There's something about you that should be drawing somebody else to Jesus. There's something about your anointing, your call on your life that you should be making disciples. There's a time now that God is calling his people. We're leaving here, church. And I would hate for us to be accounted when we see the master said, well, I told you on November the 14th, 2000, and 21 to go make fish go catch them bring them in and you didn't do what I told you to do depart from me obedience is better than sacrifice so I charge you kingdom connection by the power of the Holy Ghost, not by my power. I don't have any, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, I charge you, go fishing, go fishing. And I don't mean no Lake De Grey or Lake anything else, fish for men. The town is dying, there is a call we need help over here. We need help. But Jesus haven't found one in this city. To the day he told me to pronounce it upon you. That you are the church. That 
his calling to rise up and make fishers of men. You are the church that he's passing that mantle to Pastor Ross. You are called now to go forth in the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring me into Jesus. Bring him in here. Teach him. Love him. Disciple him. And then send them out so they can bring others in. God said it. I believe it. And it's settled. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Go forth. Go forth in the power of the Holy Ghost and do what the woman of God say do. And I will bless you. I will take care of you. I will give you overflow, overflow, overflow. More than you can ever imagine. Don't worry about if she or he don't come with me. Just go. You have a woman of God that I stand with you. She will go. And she too have called to make disciples. So she will undergird you. She won't go before you. But she will go with you. Take the leaders. Teach them how to fish. Train them up in the way that they need to go. So that they can catch fish. So this time another year, this house will have overflow. 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 This city, the lights will shine again. There will be a beacon on this building that people will ride through and they say, we go into that place because we see the light. We see the light and the glory of God in that place. And we want to shine. We want to go. We want to go. We want some of that anointing. So go forth, Pastor Ross. Go do what God is commanding you to do today. Make fishers, catch fish, do what the work of an apostle. Stand firm in the word of God. Take your course. Take your course. You've been through so much, but you didn't burn up. You come out. He brought you out. He took you in to bring you out. And you come out better, much better. You need to know him in the power and in the resurrection of his great power. He's been by your side. He's been your keeper. He's been your way maker, your miracle worker, your powerful, powerful savior. Now he's charging you. He's commanding you to go forth, go forth, go forth, go forth and catch fish. And all of you who will stand with him, God said, I will bless you. Like I bless the partners, the other people in the other boat. I will not forget your house. I will not forget you. Because you have stood with this great man of God. I will not forget you. Stand with him. Don't get ahead of him. Don't persecute him. Don't put your mouth on him. Stand with him. And I'll bless you. Some of you got prayers on the altar. Been there a while. He said, get yourself in line, as the woman of God is saying, and I'll bless you. I'll bless you. I'll bless your home. I'll bless your family. I'll bless them coming in and going out, because you have hearkened to the voice of the Lord. You have heard her. You have heard her. And now, go forth. Go forth. Go forth. Make disciples in the name of Jesus. Christ our Lord. We thank you, Yeshua. We thank you, Yeshua. We thank you, Yeshua. We thank you, Yeshua, for this word. You told me it was a simple word for a simple time. Be obedient. Be obedient. Hearken to the voice of our God. Let's praise him, y'all. Just praise him. Let's praise him. Just praise him. Yes, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for strength. Thank you for strength. Thank you, God, for obedience. 
Thank you, Lord. 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 Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Jesus is here. He's in this place. He's in this place. He's here. He's here. He's here. Let him touch you. Let him cleanse you. Let him make you whole. Let him make you complete. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Robo koshandare de osa. Robo sikandare de oso. Handare robo kori asi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Robo kositi. Nandare robo kosi. Nandare robo kosi. Nandare robo kosi. Robo shandare de de robo kuhu. Yera da na ma shiketete. Yera I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. For you are with me. That rod and that staff that comfort you, Pastor. He prepares a table before you in the very presence of your enemies. He has anointed your head with oil. Follow God. Follow God. Follow God. Man of God. Woman of God, follow God, follow God, and watch, watch. It won't be as long as you think it will be. Hallelujah. It won't be that long. You know he can send a millionaire in here, and things can change in a minute. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ha, <laughs> ha. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. If y'all could see what I see in the spirit, if you could just see what I see, there's dancing in the streets. There's dancing on popular. There's dancing and dancing and dancing. The Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Reach out and touch him. Reach out and touch him. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Every knee. Every knee provide. Everything, Jesus, that they stand in the need of. Provide it for him, Lord. Provide for him, Lord. You are on time, God. Yes, you are. You don't miss nothing. You know. You know. You know what these people need, God. You know better than I do. But you sent me with a word. Now, I've done what you told me to do. And God, it's up to you. It's up to you. And as he obeys you, and I know he will, God, I expect great things to happen in this church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. He said, I give you the city. I give you the city, Pastor. I give you the city. And you have a great cloud of witnesses. They praying for you today. Mama. Pastor Johnson. There's others praying for you. That you don't fail. You're the one he's chosen. You are the one. You are the one. You are the one. The city needs it. The city needs it. The city needs it. When he sent the disciples out, he sent them out in twos. And he told them to go and preach the gospel baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And if they don't receive you, dust your feet and keep moving. Everybody don't want Jesus, but there's a clarion call down here. God wouldn't have sent me with this message, 
there is a cry that we want something better. There's something better. And they've been to churches and they have not found it. But you are gonna go and you're gonna kiss those fish and you're gonna bring them to the side and you're gonna disciple them in the name of Jesus. Entrepreneurs will come forth. Mm. Entrepreneurs. See, Jesus' crew was not those that had degrees, more degrees than on a thermometer. Jesus had a simple group of men to do a mighty work. He didn't look for the ones with all the education. They had to know the Greek or the Hebrew. He just listened to them that said, yes, Lord. I'll go, yes, Lord, I'll go. That's all. So don't worry about your grammar. Don't worry about your education. Just follow Jesus. Follow him. And when he said go, go. When he said stay, stay. When he said shut up and listen, shut up in the house. Listen for the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost. Who is the, under this man? Who is under this man? Who's the, uh, Cowry, Corey, y'all, all y'all come up here, whoever's under this man. If you're a leader, pastor, whatever. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Y'all got assignments. All of y'all got assignments. All of y'all. All of y'all. Some of y'all can't see your faces because they're going to be masked, but that's all right. You got assignments. You to uplift this man. I charge you to pray for this man every day. Every day. Even if it's about 11.59 p.m., call this man out. Call the woman of God out. He ain't gonna need it. God's finna do something in this city. And he needs it. Because they're gonna be the sayers, the soothsayers. They're gonna be those Pharisees. But God has got him. God has got him. And God is saying no weapon formed against him shall prosper. So every tongue that raises up against him, the Lord will deal with. You don't have to defend him. God's got him. You just stay with him. Cover him. Cover him in prayer. Cover him in whatever things that he had need of to make this ministry be what God wanted to be. God is holding you accountable just as he is here. If he fail, you will fall. Because so the head goes, so do the body. I don't want to come down here another time and have to repeat this same thing. I don't like repeats. I didn't like it in school. I tried to pass every class because I didn't like to take tests over. So God is telling you, stand firm. Stand firm with this ministry. Stand firm with this woman and man of God because he's going to do some great things here. There's a, this city has always been on the heart of the Lord. Always. Pastor Johnson started a move that was unthinkable at that time in Marianne, Arkansas. But look at God. It didn't stop. It slowed down, but it didn't stop. And I'm here to stir up the fire again. Stir it up in each and every one of y'all hearts. Every one of you. Don't just be lip sayers, be doers. Be doers. Do what the word say. Do what the word say. And your home and your life will be blessed. Thank you. Father, I thank you. And I've done what you told me to do. Thank you for Pastor Ross and this great church for allowing me to open my eyes to launch out again. Thank you, Father. Thank you that I come full circle. Thank you, Lord, that this place will explode with your power. There will be a great explosion 
to come out of this city because of this church. Because these people are going to catch on fire for you. And whether they had been trained to go to somebody or bring them to church, you have stirred them up today, Lord. And when they hear of someone in need, you will bless them to bless others. You said they had other partners. There was others. Peter and them didn't just feed his four and no more. He called forth for the other partners. That's where the partners ministry started. If anybody's in confusion, it's in the Bible. Partners. So God, we thank you. We thank you for this day, a beautiful day. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Yeshua. In the mighty name of Yeshua. Yeshua, our God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you can, I know some of us are still caught in the spirit, but if you can, praise the Lord with me. <laughs> Hallelujah for what he has done through Apostle Jones. And amen. I, as an apostle myself, I tell you, Apostle Jones, Mission accomplished. We received that word. We thank you for the truth and the confirmation that has been unsettled in my spirit for the last few months. As they say, he may not come when you want him, but when he shows up, <laughs> It's right where you need it. We bless you. We just, I, I, I say this, but I don't say this to be saying it, but I, I, I love this church. I love Mariana. I love Lee County. I love where I come from. And I know that God has, has given me something to do. And I'm forever grateful for all of you who have decided to do it with me. And I want you to know I love you. And I thank God for all of you. The Holy Spirit is intelligent. That was the altar call for today. But before we move forward in the service, I want to honor someone. Lady Johnson, will you come up? Lady Ross, you too. Lady Johnson, come up. I've seen so many, so many, many, up here with me, so many churches throw first ladies away when the pastors passed away. I've seen it. And I've seen first ladies leave ministries that they're the husband labored in, <laughs> you know, because the congregation was in a hurry to get rid of them and get somebody new. And I'm just going to be honest with you. That same spirit attacked Lady Johnson when Pastor died. And there were a lot of people that were ready to just move her aside. But we said, no, we're not going to be that kind of church. And we took care of her as long as the Lord had provided for us too. Are y'all still with me? I'm talking about as a church now. We took care of Lady Johnson. 
the pastor passed away. Amen. And I'm so glad for her to continue to stay here and be with us. And if she can, I just want to let her have some words. Amen. Because she's just as much a founder as me and Lady Ross. I want y'all to understand that. Amen. And we want to continue to honor her as Pastor Lady Johnson. Amen. Amen. Come on, lady. All praises be to the Almighty God. I don't even know where to begin. But I want you to know that what Pastor Ross just stated is so very true. Yeah. And maybe a lot of people didn't know it, but they took care of me. Yeah. And I went on and got married, and they never... Sister Dorothy say, kick me out the door. And it's no secret, I'm divorced and I'm still here. Yeah. There's been a lot of things, a lot of oppositions, a lot of dispositions. Yeah. And I just held my peace. And I'm going to be honest, past the things I didn't agree with. But I was taught, my husband, my late husband taught me to keep your mouth off of God's preachers. I was taught that. My daddy taught me, you ain't called him to preach. He didn't call you, he called him. And he don't always show us what they show them. So my thing was just hold your peace. And I, I, I want y'all to know, I don't care, even sometimes, and I don't agree, and I was upset about some things. I still, because I do understand that you have to pray for the man and woman of God. And when you pray, Sister Dorothy, when you were saying that you started praying for those people up there, yeah, that's how you do it. But I'm thankful and grateful for where I am because I know a word is always taught in kingdom connection. And all the times the word doesn't feel good. I'm telling you all the time, the word is not exciting. That word hurts sometimes. That word cuts sometimes. And it doesn't feel good. But if you know who God is, you know he said the word was like a two-edged sword. If it comes this way, it's coming back this way. And I tell God, and as I get older, I have to tell him this. Whatever it is that you're trying to get over to me, and I tell God, I said, this is a valley moment for me. I'm, it's, it's heavy. It's, I'm in the valley. And I tell God, I said, it's a valley moment for me, so I need you to help me get what I need to get out of this part of this valley because I'm not you, Sister Dorothy. I may be in the valley again, but I don't want to keep dwelling in this same part of the valley. And God showed me one day, he said, when I have you in the valley, if you ever notice how green grass is in the valley, have you ever noticed how it stayed watered and wet in the valley? There's growth in the valley. There's growth in the valley. So when we are in those hard spots, those hard places, there's some growth. And the best thing for us to do is ask God, what do you want me to get out of this? And get what you need to get. I'm grateful that I'm a part of where Pastor Johnson was and will always live. I'm grateful that I have that season in my life. I never regret, never will. I'm grateful that it's here. And I leave this world with that season in my life. Because I'm telling you, it wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be. I used to have the worst mouth, Stephanie. Oh my God. I used to say some stuff. You better not ask me twice what I said because I put something else with it. He told me one day, he said, if you're going to be my wife, you got to stop all that. And at that time, I said some, some other stuff. But anyway, he said, I'm telling you, he said, I'm going to leave you. Who's going to leave you because she won't stop cursing? 
so I told him one day, I said, you leave me, and I pushed him. Y'all, this is comical here. I woke up the next morning, he had all his things packed, and he said, before I hit you, I leave you. He said, you ain't going to keep saying these kind of words and whip me. I went back there in that little room out there in that country, and I waited. He got on that school bus and left, and I started praying. Lord, I need you to fix my mouth. One of the best moves I ever made, because I stayed right there for 24 and a half years. Amen. Sister Dorothy said, you can't go bring no mud, because mud already been with Jeff. <laughs> that was so funny, but it's so true. And I said that to say this, he was a legendary in my life. He really was. He really was. And I thank God again for that season. I thank God for Keno Connections. Thank God for my pastors. It ain't always what we need it to be. And I just saw that message you sent me the other day. I ain't gonna tell y'all what it was. I'm like, what in the world? I know. <laughs> but I thank God. And Sister Dorothy, we needed that today. We needed that clarity. We needed that. You pray for us. We gonna keep praying for y'all. And we all gonna be all right. I thank God for keeping the connection. Y'all already know I love all y'all crazy folk. <laughs> Even though I do say some stuff sometimes. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you, baby. Bless God today. Today has been a, I've been crying since I got here this morning. Um, it's just been a good day. It's, it's good to see so many of you all here. Um, it's just refreshing. It's refreshing. It's refreshing. It's good to see my my aunt cousin, Charlie. Yeah. You know, and every time I look over there, she she reminds me of my mother-in-law. So it's hard for me to be, you know, I have to take a quick look, you know. But it's just good to be amongst, you know, family. It's just been a blessed day to me. I came, and Sister Dorothy, I told you, I'm open. I came to receive. I need a word. And I received the word. <sighs> it, it, every round goes higher and higher, new level, new devil, all these cliches, they say. But I know what God has said, and it, it's not easy, but life is not. Life is not easy. However, he gives us the power. He gives us the strength to keep on keeping on. And I'm just grateful for this church. I'm thank you for the I'm thankful for the lessons. I'm thank, thankful for the blessings. I'm thankful for you, Kena Connection. Those who are here and those who are watching on social media, even though the the pews aren't full, you know, people I know you say you you you're tired of hearing about the COVID, but people use that for an excuse not to be in the house when they are everywhere else. They do. But God, that's why I say that God is showing us some stuff during this season. But they're still here, but they're not here. Amen. And I pray that they are listening and watching and they will get this word. And it's just something about being in the house, though. It's just something about the anointing can go everywhere, but it's just something about being in the house amongst but I just, I'm thankful. I love you all, and we're we going to keep on doing it. Yes, uh, that the word, we're going to do this. We're going to take, you, you're not the first person that has, has, part to, has, 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 has spoken that into us. We'll strive, we'll go two steps, and then some, and sometimes it be within the house. You know, it's hard when you're fighting against your, in the house. You got, you got to stay those, you got to have, be girded and have people praying for you. But it's, it's, sometimes it's just hard. You, you try to go, you take three steps forward, and then you make four back, and you keep on. Keep, it, it, but we going. We going. I don't care what it looks like. It just blessed me to hear. I hope my aunt can hear me because you said at 69, you started looking for a house without a dime. At, at, at 70, you got it because that's been her prayer. I don't care. I'm going to get my house. So that's, that's what she's saying. She back here. She in here. But she's been saying the same thing. So I'm just saying when you declare and you decree and you believe a thing, Look for it. Don't like, what has happened? Believe that thing and stand on it. We are going somewhere, King of Connect. I don't care what it looks like, what it seems like, what it feels like, what it smells like. We are going. 
If it's 10, we going with them 10. Amen. I love you all. I thank God for you. Let's do it. Amen. Praise it up. Give, give God glory, amen, for Lady Johnson and Lady Ross. Praise the Lord. God, glory to God. Hey, when it's done, it's done. When God has moved and moved on, it's time for us to move on as well. Amen. We're going to move into this important part of our service, which is um, an offering. We still continue to worship him in our giving. Amen. And uh, we, we do this at the end, not because it's not important, but that sometimes we need to hear what the word says before we give. <laughs> Amen, somebody. So if God has, urged, has unctioned you to change your offering uh, envelope and put some more in there, I suggest you obey him because obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on, somebody. Amen. So let's come and give unto God as God has given unto us. Amen. Praise the Lord. This time you're in the hands of the media ministry and our ushers. Bless you. And let's give, let's give the media ministry another hand. They have done an awesome job back there today. Amen. And, and I'm telling you, the devil was busy this morning. He was trying to get all in the technology and it wasn't working, but they got it working. God moved and got it working right before service started. Glory to God. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for the opportunity to give, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you that you've made provision, you've made a way to bless your people, Lord. Lord, we thank you for those who gave, who those who desired to give but did not have. Lord God, we pray that you would bless them to be able to give. Lord God, we thank you that your word says that when we bring our tithes into the storehouse, there will be meat in your house. And Lord God, we thank you that you said that when we bring our tithes, that you would open the windows of heaven, pour us out blessings we won't have room enough to receive, and that as we give, that it will be given to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You will cause others to give into our bosoms. Thank you for making a way to bless your people, Lord. We pray that this offering would be used to benefit your kingdom, to build your church. In Jesus' name, we just thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That being said, hallelujah. Uh, we... Oh, yeah, I forgot. We don't have, we're not sitting down and eating together, but we do have some to-go food and drinks for y'all to take with you. Amen. We're not going to be in the fellowship right now, but we'll get to that. But we do have uh, a plate for you to take with you. Glory to God. So we thank God for uh, those that have 
have cooked for us. Bless them. Amen. And we thank you, Lord, that this food is already blessed. And it is going to be a blessing to all of us that enjoy it. In Jesus' name. Amen. That being said, let us stand. Hallelujah. And again, always, we thank you for, for tuning in on social media. We thank you for spending that time with us whenever you, you listen. Some, some of you listen later after the, afterwards, but whenever you listen, our hearts are and our thoughts are always with you. And we continue to pray for you as well as you continue to support us online. Amen. Now, what I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray. God bless you. God be with you. And in case you didn't know, I say that all the time, but I got that from Pastor Johnson, and that's why I keep saying it. Glory to God. God bless you. God be with you.